In this lesson, we are going to be looking at reference angles. Now, we have done this before, but we were using degrees. But this lesson is all about radians. Okay, so I did explain in a previous lesson how to draw these angles, but we're going to practice it now anyways. So the way I explained it in one of those previous lessons was we know that if this is a 4, then you should break this top part and this bottom part into four parts. So you break the top part into four equal parts, like that. So this would be part one, part two, part three, and part four. Do the same at the bottom. So that could be part one, part two, part three, part four. You see, so we have four parts at the top, four parts at the bottom. The reason we chose four parts is because of this number over here. Now what you do is to find 3 pi over 4, you're just going to go 3 parts. 1, 2, 3. The reason I went this way and not this way is because this angle is positive. You see there's no negative in the front. If it was negative, I would have gone this way. But because it's positive, I'm going to go there. Okay, and then we can just draw in our angle. Or we can sorry, draw in that line over there. And there we have it. Now... We can get rid of all these dotted lines. You don't actually have to put the dotted lines there. They're just there to help you visualize where 3 pi over 4 would go. Now, that's quadrant 2, right? Because we know that that's quadrant 1, that's quadrant 2, that's quadrant 3, and that's quadrant 4. So the next thing we need to do, so let's just say we are in quadrant 2. The next thing we need to do is find the reference angle. So if you watched my video where I explained this using degrees, then what we did was we always highlighted this axis over here and then this axis over here and the reference angle is the one that is in between those two. Okay, now you need to understand that we start here at zero. This is pi. If you go all the way around, that's pi, okay? If you go all the way to the, to the beginning again, that's two pi. So if you go up to, if you go from here to here, then that would be a half pi. So this would be pi over 2. And then this would be 3 over 2 pi's, which is between pi and 2 pi. Okay. So, and then we also know that this is 3 over 4 pi up to here, because that's what we, that's what we have over there, right? So think about this. If this is pi going all the way to there, and this is 3 quarters pi, then if you want to know what this angle would have to be, well, then you could say pi take away 3 over 4 pi. Now, this is the same as 4 over 4, right? Because it's 1. So 4 over 4 pi, or 4 pi take away 3 pi, is going to be 1 pi over 4. So this is a quarter pi or pi over 4, and that is your reference angle. Let's try another one. We've got a lot of examples. So here it's 6 at the bottom. So I want you to break your top part of the quadrant diagram into 6 parts. So the way you could do that is you could do a dotted line there, a dotted line there. Uh, this could be the other one, that, um, like that, and like that. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you could even think of this as 1 pi over 6. Up to here would be 2 pi over 6. Up to here would be 3 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, and 6 pi over 6, which is the same as just pi, because the 6's could cancel. So that maybe this will be better for some of you. So if we want, they want us to draw 5 pi over 6, so that means we'd start um, over here, and we'd go all the way to here. So that's 5 pi over 6. And so that is quadrant number 2 that we are in. Now, to find the reference angle, we are going to highlight that over there. Oh, and we haven't even drawn in our terminal side. So the terminal side is always from the center. Like that. So now we can highlight the terminal side. Now to find this angle over here, which is the reference angle, we could just say 6 pi over 6 take away 5 pi over 6. And that's just going to be 1 pi over 6. And that would be our reference angle. 
Here's our next example. So because there's a four at the bottom, let's break our diagram up into four parts at the top. So we could do that by just putting a line there. This is obviously the second one, and then there. So you see how we have four parts, one, two, three, four. So you could imagine that this is pi over four, or one pi over four, this is two pi over four, this is three pi's over four, and well, let me do that a bit better. And then this is four pi over four. Okay, so nine pi, oh, we're gonna have to do some more. So let's do down here and down here. So this would be five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, eight pi over four, and then of course if we carry on, then this would become nine, 10, you get it, right? So if we wanna go all the way to nine pi over four, then you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine would stop here. So we could draw our terminal side like that. Okay, and so that's quadrant one. So that's the answer for that first one. Now your reference angle, well, that's gonna be easy. That's always from the X axis. And then there's a terminal side. And then the angle between that is your reference angle. So that's gonna be pi over four. So that will be your reference angle, pi over four. This next example is pretty cool because it's got a negative, okay? So we're still gonna break our things up into four parts. So that would be pi over four or one pi over four. Two pi, let me just do that properly. Two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five, six, seven, and uh, this would go all the way back to eight pi over four, but it starts at zero. So now if they go minus three, they want us to go three parts backwards. So you're gonna go one. So you see how I went, because it's a minus, I'm going backwards. I'm not going this way. I'm rather going that way. So that's gonna be one, two, three. Okay, and so let's draw our terminal side like that. And so that's quadrant number three. Now, so that would be the answer, which quadrant? Now to find the reference angle, we need to highlight the x-axis as well as the terminal side. There we go. And so to find this angle, you could imagine four pi over four to five pi over four. If you minus them, that's just gonna be pi over four. So that is your reference angle. The next one is you break it up into three. Now with three, you gotta be careful. Um, to make three equal parts, you can't actually use this part. Uh, you'll see now what I mean. So I'm actually gonna block that part out for now. And to make three equal parts, you're gonna go there and then there. See, because then that's, okay, that doesn't look like equal parts, Kev. It's more like there, there. Okay, so now these are three equal parts. You see how we can't use the y-axis as one of the parts, because if we do, then the spacing won't be equal. Okay, and then if we go like that, and like that. Okay, so that would be pi, uh, one pi over three, uh, two pi over three, um, three pi over three, four pi over three, five, and uh, this is zero, and this is six pi over three, which is the same as two pi. Okay, but now they want us to go negative. Okay, and how many places? Five, so we're gonna go five back. One, two, three, four, five. So that's where we are there. Uh, I guess we could draw this line in now. Okay, so from the for the terminal side, there it is, and that's quadrant number one. Now to find your reference angle, always highlight your x-axis and your terminal side. And then your reference angle is the angle between those two, okay? So here you start at zero, here it's pi over three, so your reference angle is pi over three. 